Live from Franklin Hall Studios at Kent State University, it's The Agenda. And now, here are your hosts, Jeremy Herbert and Morgan McLeod. We're back. Whether you like it or not, this is The Agenda, and I'm Jeremy Herbert. And I'm Morgan McLeod. Who is this guy? Is this a bit? I'm, I'm Morgan. I'm the other host. Well, that's, that's swell. Yeah, you betcha. What are you waiting for, Garfunkel? You're holding up the show. <sighs> okay, well, our more astute viewers may have noticed we've been gone for three months. We like to assume you don't watch any news programs but the agenda. So here's what you missed. Hulk Hogan is racist. Atticus Finch is racist. Donald Trump is running for president. Donald Trump is racist. I found God. John Stewart died. I lost God at the grocery store. A new Fantastic Four movie came out. Gas prices went down. A new Terminator movie came out. Gas prices went up. Gas prices went down a little bit. A new Star Wars movie is coming out. It was hot. It looks great. Kent closed Arthur Treacher's. I was a disappointment. I loved Arthur Treacher's. Garfield creator Jim Davis refused to marry gay people. Kent closed Jump Asian Express. Tuition went up. I love Jump Asian Express even more. My stepmom left. My stepmom came back. Morgan's a douche. Jeremy hurt my feelings. Star Wars is still coming out. You know, I'm surprised. That wasn't half bad. I expected a real train wreck there. Yeah, well, I think that about summers things up. The internet went crazy yesterday over a viral video of a rat carrying a slice of pizza down the stairs of a New York subway. Said a local homeless man who witnessed the event, That's cute. I'm dying. A hacker group who goes by the name Anonymous has recently offered a proposal, excuse me, ISIS a proposal to sell the group ISIS branded lingerie. I don't know about you folks, but the only thing I can imagine scarier than ISIS attacking the U.S. is them doing so while rocking sexy black laceless thongs with matching black push-up bras. Now that is a mouthful. As some of you may have heard, Kanye West announced he will be running for president in the year 2020. Sticking to our hard journalistic roots, we decided to carry out a survey conducted by longtime friend of the show, Kanye West. Take a look. What's up, Kent State? Your Lord and Savior here, Kanye, for President 2020. Now I'm going to do the little participations of your little kids on this campus here, okay? And they better say yes, they're voting for me. Huh? To avoid some awkward conv kanye -sation. I'm going to have to go undercover. Ah! What do you think of Kanye running 2020? I don't know. What are your uh, stances on some things? My stances? I think you want to know what I think. Have you heard the album, Jesus? I have, actually. You have? Now, what do you think about the album? It's pretty good. Like, was compared to, like... If you're comparing like the Dre's new stuff, like it's a lot better because you know Drake, he's out of the game right now. He is out of the game. He fought under deep, under the dirt, like under my boots right now. My stance is Kanye, he is, you know, he is the, the, the inevitabilities of the mechanistic galaxies coming all together into one entity. You know what I'm saying? Now he just old, old, grimy, washed up. Not like Kanye, Kanye in the sky, Jesus. Oh, oh. But anyway, I want you to V-O-T-E. You know what that means? Yeah, I do. Vote. What's vote mean? It means that you're sending... No, it don't mean that. It means vote for Kanye. That's what it means. All right. All right. Can you do that for me, man? Uh, I'll think about it. Ah! All right. Say it with me. Ah! Huh? There we go. Kanye West is? I mean, yeah. Did you know that Kanye is running for presidency 2020? Kanye, it's posted. It's is that you? <laughs> Kanye, is that you? I, I don't, I'm not Kanye. Kanye. I'm not. Get, Kanye, get out of my, that, get out of my face. All right, get, Kanye. get, stay Kanye. anyway. Kanye. Like, Kanye. Kid, Kanye. Hey, hey, kid, hey, Kanye. hey, you can, you can hang around, kid. Okay. All right, but just, just don't blow my cover. All right, all right, just, just don't blow my. Now, now I don't even have to wait in line. I just go in the front, you know. Just come over here. I like how you're making the pretzels back there. It's really nice. Keep it up. Excuse me, ma'am. 
Will you vote for Kanye West of 2020? Kanye! Kanye West of 2020! Come back, man. This is what he's gonna offer to you. If you vote for Kanye West, I can get you a record deal. You spit that high fire? Yeah, yeah, man. My mixtape's coming out soon. It's coming out? Yeah. Spit a little bit of bars for me, boy. Uh. Running on the bicycle. Come back. <sighs> hey, chipmunk. Do you know Kanye? Kanye 2020? Come. Do you know who Kim K is? Kim. Kim Kardashian. Yes, I do know. Do you watch the show? No, I do not. Kanye West, 2020 AD, after death of Christ. And then Jesus come after that. Now, young Jesus, no, he gonna bring, he gonna bring the pain. He gonna bring the glory to the nation. This is for the masses. They gots to know what Kanye West is gonna do for them in 2020. No one man should have all that power. Clock's ticking, I just count the hours. Vote for him, AD. After 2020, death of Christ, then he's come next. All right. Ah! Turn your ways up. Well, he's got my vote. Ike Meso, the new Japanese website, allows women to, play han to excuse me, pay handsome Japanese men to wipe their tears. Women can select a man from the website, and he will come to their home or place of work to comfort them. If the woman is not already crying, the men will bring a sad movie with them to make them cry. But in my experience, if you really want to make a woman cry, all you have to do is forget her birthday. Again, I'm sorry. Volkswagen has come under fire after the world discovered that their cars are designed to cheat on emissions tests. This revelation has caused almost $20 billion of stock losses over the past week and has led to the resignation of Volkswagen's CEO, Martin Winterkorn. Here to discuss the future of the company is the new CEO, Dr. Hans Evelman. <coughs> Correction. <coughs> it is pronounced Evelman. My apologies, Dr. Evelman. Can you tell us anything about the new direction the company's taking? Why, yes. Now that I've taken the reins of the company, we will be revitalizing the Volkswagen brand to some degree. We will be completely honest about our business practices now. From this point forward, we will use no more fossil fuels. Oh, so you're pursuing cleaner energy sources. Yes. From now on, all the Volkswagen cars will be running on baby rabbits a reliable and renewable resource. No more worrying about the harmful smog emission of diesel, only the sweet smelling perfume of the burning bunny. That's an interesting development. And in addition to this much cleaner fuel, the new models will be coming standard with many more improvements. Our the new Beatles will have the capacity to attach and remotely fire the automatic weapon of your choice. Well, that's good. Most other brands don't give you any options. Precisely. We will be creating products to align with our new ideologies. I have personally redesigned the Volkswagen logo. Here are my sketches. It looks like a skull with guns behind it. Ah, uh, yes, and there is a snake in the eye socket. Uh, do you like? Well, it certainly seems iconic. Uh, there are rumors that you are already designing a new car to be released next year? Ah, uh, yes. Yes. The new model is fast approaching. It will be the vehicle of our salvation. Our... the doom of us all. <laughs> it has the 20-cylinder engine, the dry stage proportion, the 88-millimeter cannons, and the capacity to feel pain. The all-new Doomsday Sedan will usher in a new era of Volkswagen supremacy. Well, that sounds terrifying. Indeed. Terrifying and extremely user-friendly. The new main goals of an, any modern enterprise. This is all. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here, Dr. Evelman. It was definitely enlightening. This new dad is picturing a treehouse in the sky. But, but he's, he's ignoring, ignoring the instructions. instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I 
hope mom knows what to do. Oh. Mom. See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to The Agenda. With Halloween right around the corner, Yandy.com has decided to release a new sexy Donald Trump costume. Because why objectify yourself when Donald Trump can do it for you? Oh, um, a, a woman in northern Indiana crashed her car when she noticed a spider on her shoulder and jumped from the moving vehicle. The resulting accident sparked an atomic fusion between the arachnid and the woman, generating a successful movie franchise and a reboot due this summer. An Ohio couple is suing a fraternity clinic after receiving sperm from a black donor rather than the white donor they requested. While the couple says they still care for the child, it will be much easier to do with $50,000. April Goss of the Kent State University football team became the second girl in college football history to score a goal. We actually invited April here to talk tonight about the big event, but she's way too busy with actual news shows to talk to us, so we got her best friend, Megan Shepard. Welcome, Megan. Can you tell us what it was like for April to score that big field goal? It was great. She had been waiting for this moment for a very long time. She said it felt like she blacked out when she kicked it but she thought she was going to miss it at first, but she did make it, and it was awesome. Sweet. That's great. It reminds me of the time I almost made it to the States. Yeah, okay, almost is the operative word there. No one wants to hear about your high school glory days. Okay, well, I'm sorry, Jeremy, but could you please buzz off? This is my interview. Oh, okay, um, excuse me. Megan, uh, what got April interested in football? Son of a bitch. All right. I, her junior year of high school is when she got interested in football. Her parents weren't that thrilled about the idea, but her dad eventually gave in and he actually taught her how to kick. That's a really sweet story. I bet he's really proud of her. Jeremy is just mad because he doesn't have an athletic bone in his body. I played sports in high school. You played tennis. You were, you were ranked last. They don't cut anyone. Guys, aren't we here to talk about April's historic kick and not your I'll masculinity? have you know that I was gym leader of racket sports at my high school, Lutheran High School West. It was the best non-public high school in the greater Rocky River area. I doubt it, that doesn't even sound like a real high school. Guys, this doesn't seem as... It was real to me, okay. all right? That's all that matters. You know what, let's settle this. Arm wrestling contest right, right here, live right, show. Fine. Winner gets a Schweppes. I'm down. Well, thanks for having me hey, on this that? show. What? <laughs> you lovable piece of garbage. Okay then. <laughs> High school racket sports may have been a waste of time. The agenda will be right back. Well, Tom, what are we going to do? I don't know, Margaret. This, this clearly isn't the child that we asked for. What are we going to tell our parents? We, we deserve compensation. Is your baby not with a doctor ordered? Did the sperm bank refuse to give you a refund even though you brought the receipt? Is your child too short, too tall? Lactose intolerant? A Democrat? Unresponsive to your last name? A communist? In a jazz band? Nervous when you mention their birth certificate? Fat and knows it? Well, at Johnson & Peters, we say, come on in. We knew we had the wrong sperm when our babies start crying in Spanish. But now we have enough money that we don't have to love them. We were devastated when we found out our child was an atheist. But thanks to Johnson & Peters, that's our living nanny's problem. <laughs> Do other lawyers in their fancy tailored suits say you don't have a case? Well, they don't know dick. Actually, I go by Richard. At Johnson & Peters, we say wrong sperm, right firm. Call 1-800-NOT-MINE. That's 1-800-NOT-MINE. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Hey, you didn't leave. In 2019, Apple Incorporated is planning on releasing their first car. And just like most Apple products, the car will have a tendency to crash. In 2019, Apple Inc. is planning on releasing their first car. But hold on to your money. As soon as you purchase the new Apple car, a new and updated version will come out. 
Playboy recently named Ohio University as the top party school of the year. The only surprise here is that Playboy has the authority to rank something nationally other than the best press of 2015. Kent State wasn't terribly far behind OU in the party school rankings, placing seventh, but we aren't even close to satisfied, and we think we can up our game. So today we brought in party expert and self-proclaimed Fiesta King, Cody. Hello, Cody. Sup, bruh? So before we start talking about what Kent can do to improve our party game, what exactly qualifies you to talk on the subject? Bruh, I've thrown approximately 69 ragers and roughly 420 bangers, not to mention the ridic amount of sizzlers. Also, I was heavily involved in the invention of the gravity bong, I sold E for three years, and I have six DUIs. Oh, so I, you've seen your fair share of shindigs. Nah, never a shindig, bruh. Uh, anyway, what do you think Kent would have to do to compete with OU? Well, Morgan, as you can see from this graph, the numbers are dangerously low in the following categories. Flipped cars, drug dealers, polo shirts, haircuts like Macklemore's, and most importantly, trap music. We're hearing way too much Modest Mouse and not enough Fetty Wap. Oh man, I don't know if I actually want those things. Oh yes you do. Statistics say there's a direct correlation between the aforementioned aspects of partying and oral sex. Is that the end goal? Obviously, Braj. How do you think the board decides the best party school? Well, I never knew, but it makes sense. Kind of. Also, your female to male ratio is a measly three to two. That's not that bad. Maybe for you, but when I party, I'm literally drowning in women. Must be nice. No, really, I'm seriously in danger most of the time. I never learned how to swim, and I can only tread women for so long. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It was 2002. My dad just dropped me off at my first real party, a rager specifically, and I saw a small pool of women. I thought I could handle it, but I was overwhelmed by a riptide. I tried to pull away, so naive. You know what happens when you try to swim against the riptide? Um, yeah. You get you... pulled in deeper. I was gasping for air. I saw my friends across the room. I shouted for help, but all they did was cheer for me. They had no idea the danger I was in. It's a miracle I made it out alive. Sometimes, when I'm macking on some babes, I can still feel the current. I I'm sorry. I have to leave. Wow. Maybe we, maybe we shouldn't party with that guy. It's a bad time to handle public relations for the police. The past year has seen an unending parade of new illegal actions against innocent people or unnecessary shows of force from police across the country. We here at The Agenda are always eager to report on the same news everyone else does, but fortunately Kent hasn't seen any such incidents. We do, however, have a police training video from a police precinct we cannot reveal. Let's take a look. Hello there, recruit. If you're watching this video, you're on paid leave for conduct unbecoming an officer. Well done. Whether you were caught assaulting someone while a camera was rolling, or caught assaulting someone while multiple cameras were rolling, this video is designed to get you back on the streets. Meet Officer Goofus. Goofus is a lazy officer with lazy habits and a lazy life. He's basically scum, kind of like you, except he's still on the streets. Ha ha, just kidding. And this is Officer Gallant, who is incredibly handsome. I mean, wow. I let him date my daughter. F the police, am I right? Here we see Officer Gallant doing the right thing. The first rule of being a cop, of course, is to ignore whatever crimes you see another officer doing. Remember, snitches get stitches. Now let's see how our two officers handle a routine traffic violation. Police, uh, can I see your license and registration, sir? It seems I forgot my wallet, officer. Well, if you give me a name, I'll just run it through the system. Oh, the name's Archie Reginald. That was terrible. If you behave like him, it's no wonder you were suspended. An officer of the law never takes the easy way out by reacting calmly and responsibly. Let's see how Officer Gallon handles the same situation. If you're not going to listen to me, and you're not going to get out the car, there you go. Yes, Sergeant, I have a 10-4 here. Yeah, there's a man resisting arrest. He's being very violent. Is this a gun? Oh, hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about, some action. You see, it pays off in the long run to put extra effort into your work. 
Now let's see how they handle the testimony. I pulled him over when I noticed his rear tail light was out. He didn't have an ID on him, so I ran his name through the Schmod system, and nothing came up, so I let him off with a warning. Bullshit. Just bullshit. Pulled him over after a five-hour speed chase. He had this look in his eye, his breath. It reeked of heroin. Then he pulls out a gun, real big gun, and some red bullshit. Puts three rounds in my chest, punches me in the jaw, and then goes right back to chewing on his heroin. I mean, that's some real scary shit. I would have been a goner. Now let's bring these two in and see what happens. You wanted to see me, Chief? I did, son, I did. Listen, I need you to turn in your peace and shield. But why? Because you're square. And that means you're right. Which means you're 90 degrees, which makes you too hot to handle. Now hopefully we can end things amicably. Hopefully you can find a job as a gym teacher, maybe a shop teacher. Now get out of my office. You wanted to see me, Chief? Uh, hell yes I did, son. You're getting a promotion. Huh. No talk back. You treated a lot of people like dangerous criminals out there. You see that? If you're like Officer Gallant, you too can date my daughter. <laughs> you too can be out there, back on the streets. Oh, that was enlightening. Uh, in an interview with CNN, presidential hopeful Marco Rubio made the argument that human life starts at conception. After much debate, he became convinced that he was correct based on the logic that, after conception, human life could not become a cat. It seems we were the only news organization to realize that he actually used the argument that human life can't become a cat on national television. So we invited him to the show to talk about it. Here to clarify, Marco Rubio. Thanks for coming, Senator. Oh, thank you for having me. Oh, please, that wasn't my decision. Uh, now, you had this interview. Where'd the cat come from? You had to be just pulling stuff out of your ass, right? Well, it's simple. Science has decided that Ronald Reagan was indeed <coughs> not born a cat. Mm. You know, I don't think anyone's disputing you on that. And Leviticus 23.9 AD, it clearly states that all feline sapiens are an abomination. I mean, we all know how this story ends. We allow people to start thinking of giving birth to cats is okay, and the sanctity of marriage goes right out the freaking window. Pardon my French. <laughs> Um, I, I'm not going to dive into any of that. What measures do you suggest we take? Well, first things first, we need to completely get rid of Planned Parenthood. <clears throat> oh, because of those videos? What videos? Are those cats making videos again? All right, ignore the cameras, ignore the lights. The cameras and the lights? Yeah, what's, what's with the cats? I mean, what's the deal with cats? They don't make any sense. You type a cat in a computer and what? It can't read it, you know? Something isn't right there. Yeah, something's not right here. Um, just so, let's move on, all right? Okay. All right, so what's, what's your plan? Leave out all the cat parts, don't even say cat. Why should we get rid of Planned Parenthood? Well, Jeremy, other than saving the babies thing, it's an excellent opportunity to create more jobs for Americans. I'm an American. Uh, me too. How so? With all those illegal storks out of the picture, the regular working class Americans can scoop up those jobs. This was a mistake. It's simple science, Herbert. And as long as we get that force field up on the border, we should be able to keep those meddling birds out for good. All right, you lost me. Not that you really had me in the first place. We got storks mm -hmm. and we got force fields. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm beginning to think you have no idea where babies come from. Jeremy, I didn't be the one that tells you this, but when a mommy and daddy love each other very much oh, and are God. Republicans, <laughs> <laughs> the milkman drops off a pregnancy test. And if the mommy passes with a C or higher, out pops an Easter egg, she eats ham until it hatches to create a beautiful white baby boy. What if it's a girl? Well, that's just the worst case scenario. We don't prepare for that one. <laughs> Yikes, all right. I know, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. Now, if that rocks your world, wait until you hear my policies on these African- Good for you, man. The agenda, uh, we'll be right back. Vote Reagan. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. 
Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Russia recently deployed 28 combat planes in Syria. When questioned further on escalating the war situation in Syria, Vladimir Putin responded, I want to do it just like they did in the movie Top Gun with Tom Cruise. Top Gun is a great movie. It's my favorite movie. Pope Francis attended a large mass in Cuba this Sunday. After declining to make any political statements on the country's socialist government, many accuse Francis of being too soft on communism. While we're at it, isn't the Queen of England being a little quiet about Russia's anti-gay laws? I mean, come on. Well, it is the beginning of the school year, which is a hard time for every hard time everywhere for new students and freshmen to make friends. Our very own Mark Fleming is here to help. Take a look. Hi guys, I'm Mark Fleming and let's be honest, you don't have enough friends. So I'm coming at you with some tips on how to make some. Tip number one, always ask very personal questions right off the bat. Oh, hey, friend. Hey, you believe in God? Who are you? Tip number two, anytime you like somebody's glasses, make sure you try them on without consent. Oh, hey. I really like those glasses. Thanks. Do you mind if I just... I... Wait. Wow. You can't see a thing. Hey, can you give those back? Oh, I, sure. Here. Tip number three. You're going to want to get as close as humanly possible to the subject you're talking to. It makes for a more personal conversation. You're going to want them to feel your hot breath on their face. Tip number four, don't be afraid to get very personal very fast. Uh, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Uh, how much do you weigh? Excuse me? Tip number five, always talk about weed. People love marijuana and will be impressed that you smoke it. Uh, oh, hey, it, it's you again. Do you smoke weed? Not really. I mean, I did once. I smoke weed. Great. Tip number six. If you want to seem interesting, smell interesting. Uh -oh. Hi, how are you? Oh my god, you smell like my worst nightmare. Take a shower. <laughs> Tip number seven. Make sure you always talk about memes. Uh, hey. No. Tip number eight. Touching is good. Uh, Hey! Hey, what's up? Buddy! Good. Yep. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Yep. Yep. Tip number nine. Be bubbly. Hey! How are you, pal? Leave me alone. There's never a bad time to talk about politics. So, are you a Democrat? Oh my gosh. Okay, the final step of the plan is to sit back and let the friends come crawling to you. <coughs> well, I guess that pretty much wraps it up for this episode of The Agenda. Good night. Everyone's got to die sometime. What was that? Good night, everybody. We need a rematch right now. Right?